Hello there! Today, I will be listing all of Frank Zong's abilities within all the books that he appears in. So that means I'll be using the Heroes of Olympus series and the Trials of Apollo series as reference. So yeah, minor spoilers from those books ahead. And the last thing to note is that if you've seen my other abilities videos, you will know that these are abilities that are only derived from the original source material. So sorry my lovely viewers, no fanfiction powers here. Alright, who's ready for some Frank abilities? Let's get into this, shall we? Frank is a child of the Roman war god Mars. However, despite his war godly parentage, Frank is sweeter than a jawbreaker wrapped in chocolate. <laughs> so he can kick some serious butt while also being a pretty chill dude on the inside. This attitude pairs up very well with his first ability, which I'm calling Tactical Info. This ability allows for Frank to easily read any battlefield and quickly understand which positions are most suitable to capitalize on. So he can easily spot an unguarded flank, take notice of who has the upper hand, or even understand which strategy is most effective in the moment and capitalize on the positions and win the battle for his team. His chill attitude works well with his ability since he can calmly make decisions in the moment and not be too overwhelmed, which has been proven to be very handy for his team winning battles. <laughs> I mean, this power would also be kind of insane when it comes to any online voice chat strategy games, so... <laughs> Our good old buddy Frank here has an ability I want to call Weapon Mastery. This power allows him to learn and use any weapon with relative ease. The reason for him being quite the natural in this department is because weapons are tied with war. However, Frank personally prefers the bow over anything else, because he's just awesome that way. This next power allows for Frank to control the undead with his Praetor Undead Control ability. Now this ability is not as strong as Nico's version of this power, because Frank can only command Roman legionary spirits. The reason for this is because Frank is Praetor at Camp Jupiter. This means that he is the commander of the army at camp and he basically runs the place alongside another Praetor. So any Roman legionary is trained to take orders from a Praetor, which means that even if the legionary is dead, Frank can still command them to fight. However, again, it is only Roman legionary spirits this ability works on, and he can't really summon them like Nico can. But if you ask me, it's still a pretty sweet deal, cause let's be real, who wouldn't want to control the undead, and if you said no, then you're lying to yourself. Have you ever looked up into the sky and wanted to soar the skies like a bird, had the speed of a jaguar, swim the ocean with the grace of a dolphin, or maybe you just wanted to be a worm? <laughs> hey, I'm not judging. Now imagine if you can actually change into these animals whenever you want and gain their individual respective quirks. Well, that's exactly what our good old buddy Frank Zong could do with his shape-shifting ability. Frank can shape-shift himself into any animal he wishes by willing his body to become the creature he is thinking about. So, when I mean he can change into any animal, I really mean any animal, including any kind of mythological creatures. However, he cannot combine animals together, like becoming some sort of fish line hybrid or whatnot. I mean, why you would ever want to be that is beyond me, but what I'm getting at is that it must be a real creature for him to transform into. Another thing to note is that the more he knows about the animal, then the easier he can shapeshift into it. So he makes it a priority to learn about a lot of animals, and I mean I would too have had a power like that. Also, as the series has progressed, the ability has gotten more easy and less tiring for Frank, with him advancing the power where he can start an attack as a human and fluidly change into an animal to finish the attack, or vice versa. I mean, the guy likes to fall asleep shapeshifted as a bulldog, and sometimes this even leads to him turning into some other animals while he's dreaming. So yeah, I'd say he's quite comfortable with the whole shapeshifting shtick. Speaking of the animals though, some creatures he has shapeshifted into in the series are an eagle, a bear, a crow, a snake, a koi goldfish, a hippo, a freaking dragon, and a swarm of bees. Don't ask me if that last one works though. <laughs> now, you must be wondering why doesn't he just change into a dragon all the time if he can shapeshift into whatever he wants. Well, it's kind of like bench pressing your maximum weight every time you lift. It's hard and you'd hurt yourself, so turning into large creatures like dragons isn't always the best option. And lastly for this ability, you really must be wondering at this point how in the Hades he even got this power in the first place. So he didn't get this power from his dad Mars if that's what you were thinking. It's actually an ability that he got from his descendant Periclemius. Periclemius was gifted the shapeshifting power from Poseidon way back in the ancient Greek days. So this power would be passed down to every generation and it would eventually be given to the Zong family, with Frank then receiving this broken freaking ability. Now just for fun, I have a question for you guys. If you had this power, then what animal would you like to become? Mythological creatures count. Let me know in the comments. 
Now, Frank has three more abilities that I had to put on their own, because they were powers that he only had for a short period of time. So I'm going to be calling these temporary abilities. His first temporary ability I'll be naming Father's Voices. This power makes it so that you can hear both Ares, the Greek version of Mars, and his actual dad Mars talking inside his head. However, this isn't really a good thing, since they argue a lot and they can be very annoying, but Frank can somewhat control the voices and even ask them for advice. And the gods can even show him images of past events. So it's kind of like having a loud war movie stuck inside your head. <laughs> However, in Frank's situation, that's literally the case. This ability was gained because the Greeks and Romans were at war, so the war god's voices manifested inside Frank's head. Why his head specifically, I have no idea. I mean, why, wait, why did they even do that in the first place? <laughs> Though, after Frank had received the blessing of Mars, this calmed down both war gods, which in turn had Frank getting them out of his head. So he lost the power. Good riddance if you ask me. <laughs> Though speaking of the blessing of Mars, this nicely transitions me to his next ability. Frank's next ability is called the Blessing of Mars. Now you must be thinking, if Mars was stuck in his head being loud and annoying, then this so-called Blessing of Mars must not be too much of a blessing and probably more of a curse, right? But actually no, this ability is actually overpowered, literally. This power envelops Frank in a red light, and while this light is around him, he will be invulnerable from any attack and will be given superhuman strength. Because yes please. Frank got this power by showing off his leadership and tactic skills within a battlefield. However, he doesn't have any control of this power as he only received it twice from Mars temporarily after he proved himself in battle. You see, now this power isn't a good riddance. This ability is one of those, I'm glad the ability was taken away because it was overpowered and it would make Frank literally unkillable but at the same time it was so freaking cool that I wish he kept it kind of deals. But Frank doesn't need it as he has proven himself time and time again without the power of immortality. I mean, he can turn into a literal dragon. Must I say more? <laughs> Frank's last ability on this list I'd say is more of a magical item rather than an ability. However, it's so important to his character that I couldn't just not mention it. Introducing the coolest ability to ever grace the world of magic and monsters. It's the one, the only, Burned Stick. So Frank has a wooden stick that controls his entire life force. What that means is that if the stick burns up completely, then Frank is destined to die. The reason for this is because Frank was born as a child of Mars while also having the gift of Paracleminus. You know, the shape-shifting power. So Frank was considered too powerful for a mortal because he had too many gifts. So the goddess Juno attached his life force to the stick so he can survive. Phew, have you been keeping up because wow. Frank has used the stick as a weapon before by willing it to burn. This will make it burst into flames. However, doing that is the equivalent to him dying, because while it burns, he will also burn in the process. And see his life flash before his eyes. Sounds like fun! Also, the stick has burned up completely within the series before, which had surrounded Frank in a column of flame and made his skin extremely hot. This resulted in the disintegration of the person he was fighting and the disintegration of his own life. However, psych, Frank did not die from that encounter. Frank in that moment took control of his own destiny, making it so that his life force was not connected to the cursed burn stick anymore. So now he's just a normal guy with overpowered gifts. Let's go, Frank. So these are all of Frank Zong's abilities. Frank's powers kind of go unrecognized within the series, besides his shape-shifting power, but his tactician abilities, weapon usage, and even the fact that he can somewhat control the undead is really cool if you ask me. So I'm glad that I got to give you a rundown of his awesome underrated powers. As always, if you enjoyed, then please leave a like and subscribe for more of this content. If you want more in-depth character abilities, then please comment down below. So yeah, like always, stay awesome and thank you for watching.